Hello, Assalamu alaikum. My name is uh, Dr. Marwan Zadik. Uh, it is my pleasure to share with you this meeting and this lecture, role of ECMO in COVID-19. First of all, Ramadan Kareem. Uh, what's mean by the definition ECMO? ECMO is an extracorporeal membrane oxygenation. The definition uh, ECMO was replaced in uh, 1991 to ECLS. This is more comprehensive and describes the functions of the device in a more accurate way. The, here in the world map we see as red dots the distribution of the registered ECMO centers accredited by the ELSO. And ELSO is a non-profit organization that develops protocols and policies for the operation of this advanced technology and provides advice and training to centers and people who are in need. Uh, how ECMO works? ECMO is a technique for providing respiratory and cardiac support and it's functioning that the blood will circulate through an artificial lung with two compartments, one compartment for the blood and the other one, one is for gas and this causes the gas exchange, exchange the like the our uh, fun the function of our lungs. How ECMO works? ECMO uh, works and can be achieved by draining of the venous blood and then removing of the CO2. After that, adding oxygen through the artificial lung, then returning the blood to the circulation through either vein or an ar artery. We have two types of ECMO, the venous arterial one it provides both gas exchange and circulatory support. It means supporting heart and lung by heart and lung failure. Venovenous ECMO allows gas exchange only. It means isolated lung failure problem. The development of this, of the first device from its inception and how it appears as we see in the picture here. And it works in a complex way was 1971 until it was developed and became very smart as we see in the picture below. There is two indications for ECMO, one by the cardiac failure and the other one by respiratory failure. By cardiac failure we are using venoarterial ECMO, uh, we have here some examples, uh, the first one was cardiotomy, it means after um, uh, after we are unable to wean our patients from the cardiopulmonary bypass, after cardiac surgery, we use a, a veno arterial ECMO to support them. Or when we have post heart transplant, we are also the heart, the new graft is uh, unable uh, to maintain good hemodynamic, then we are supporting them temporarily with ECMO. And the other indications like decompensated cardiomyopathy, viral myocarditis, acute coronary syndrome with cardiogenic shock, and also profound, uh, profound cardiac depression due to drug overdose, for example, or sepsis. The use of venovenous ECMO, uh, there's uh, some indication like uh, adult respiratory dis syndrome, what we are focusing here now in our lecture, pneumonia, trauma, and primary graft failure following lung transplantation. Uh, the goal of the ECMO, of course, is to improve the tissue oxygenation and remove CO2 and allow aerobic metabolism whilst the heart and lung recover. And by ECMO circulation, we have dual circulation. It's mean the circulation of the ECMO and additional to that, the normal physiological circulation what we have in our system. And to describe that the ECMO circulation is a non-pulse style flow. To establish any ECMO, we need to cannulate the patient to, and we have uh, to have a good access and it is very essential for any ECMO use. How to choose our cannulas? Okay, patient size and patient age, smaller patient, smaller cannulas and the underlying disease and condition and of course type of cannulation and type of support of venous venous cannulation or the venous ECMO or the venous arterial ECMO 
And the last one point is the location where, where we are planning to do our ECMO implantation. It is planned for OR or ICU or maybe ER or sometimes of the street. For the cannulation technique, there is three types uh, of cannulation technique. The first one is open. It means we may cut down, explore the vessel and cannulate the vessels directly. The semi-open one, it means we make also cut down over the vessels where we are planning to do our uh, cannulation. But the uh, cannulation came through the skin and then under vision is through the vasculature. The last one is a percutaneous one. It's mean by closed skin without cut down, ultrasound guided um, through the zilding technique, we can insert our cannulas. In this uh, photo, we can observe here uh, a cannulated groin for a veno arterial ECMO. We use the percutaneous way here for insertion under ultrasound. The small green cannula is this is a backflow cannula uh, for perfusion of the leg to avoid ischemia. The rule of ECMO now is about our topic in COVID-19. Uh, first of all, COVID-19 disease and symptoms. Uh, in short, uh, lung, uh, lung manifestations are the most important symptoms of the COVID-19 patients, especially directly related to the use of ECMO, which affects the indifference grade. Up to 70% of patients show different grade of lung manifestation. In one of the studies around Zuhu, in the early spread of the COVID-19, he examined around 200 patients. It was found that about 30% of patients show some grade of RDS manifestation. And this carries a death rate of up to 90%. The EOLIA study show us as the, they were published uh, 2018 and define the severity of the uh, respiratory failure in adults and the trial contains three indications where uh, RDS is defined and where ECMO may be useful. The first one, the ratio PO2 to FI2 of lower than 50 for more than three hours. The, sec uh, the second one, uh, the same ratio less than 80 for more than six hours. And the third and last one, pH less than 7.25 with a pCO2 over 60 for more than six hours. By those criteria, ECMO indication is there. The global usage of ECMO in supporting COVID-19 patients. Here, the map of Europe, very actual from 10th of May, shows the distribution of COVID-19 patients and ECMO to countries and shows here France with the largest share of cases of 285, followed by Spain, Germany, and Italy. The update chart what we see here now shows us the rapid increase in cases, in cases placed and ECMO in Europe alone, and the number has increased threefold in the last months. From, 11 of, uh, from the 4th of April to 9th of May, the number is really increasing. This graphic reflecting the registered cases by ELSO. We see the distribution of cases between different types of ECMO. The blue one is the majority of these cases where an venous ECMO, which shows here more than 90% of cases. Uh, from the Barisa experience, the hospital with the highest number of ECMO cases until now in Europe, they explain their results until 11 of April, and they showed that 37% of the cases were still an ECMO. It's mean a third was an ECMO, and 63% uh, of them have completed their ECMO run. And we go deta in details, 50% went successfully from ECMO, but the other 50% expired an ECMO. It means survival rate was, in their experience, 
from about 50 percent the mean uh, survival rate now according to also around 47 percent it's similar to this one unique considerations for ECMO in COVID-19 patients we see here the Saudi extra corporal life support chapter would uh, they have their recommendation they released them and the criteria when ECMO by COVID patient should be considered and they are focusing on really young patient with no comorbidities with single organ failure and also the most important point I think that it should be less than five days mechanically ventilated. The ELSO criteria discuss also the logistic to put patient on ECMO or not is in hospital may also in a regional responsibility it is also a case-by-case -case decision depends on overall patient load staffing and other resources in the hospitals if the hospital feels that the ECMO can be safely provided then it should be offered to patient with a good prognosis use of ECMO in patient with a combination of advanced age, multiple comorbidities, or multiple organ failure should be really rare. Especially when the resources are limited, younger patients with minor comorbidities and also health workers should have high priority for ECMO. And this uh, priority is dynamic. When resources are more available, we can put more patients on ECMO, of course. When is ECMO contraindicated? Okay, standard contraindication, as we know, older age, severe acidosis, intracranial blood, uh, bleeding, malignancy, and so on. By the special contraindication during COVID-19, uh, patient could be excluded when we have limited resources. Uh, patient with significant comorbidities, really older age patient, and uh, this point is also important with patients with prolonged ventilation for more than seven days. More than seven days, some studies more than five days, other new studies more than three days make ECMO uh, yeah, not uh, benefits. The bill curve here in this graphic show the normal distribution of the infected cases. The health authorities their concern are to flatten the curve to make the health system capable for more in-hospital patients if needed. We believe ECMO usage will further increase in the next couple of weeks because the curve are flat now everywhere. Algorithms for management of acute respiratory distress syndrome. The EOLA trial show us when patients after treating the underlying cause of RDS with all standard methods, ECMO should be considered. And they divided them and distributed them in two groups. The first one to the, our left side um, with a ratio of PO2 to FIO2 of less than 150. And the other one to the right side. Uh, the same ratio for more than 150. When we go in details, um, we see here down the ratio for less than 80 for more than six hours, and the same ratio for less than 50 for more than three hours, or patient with pH uh, less than 7.25 with PO2 of more than 60 for more than six hours. Those patient should be considered for ECMO. The other group by acceptable oxygenation but severe respiratory acidosis by CO2 over 60, more than six hours, ECMO should be considered. Of course, prone positioning is mandatory in all cases. This is in strict application of the Aeolia criteria. Managing ventilation under ECMO the aim is to protect the lung with almost ultra protective setting as we see here. Smaller tidal volume less than 4 ml per kg. Peak plateau less than 24. Respiratory rate around 10. 
peep around 10 to 12. According to Eulia trial, proning is mandatory. All patients should be proned before ECMO. Prone those an ECMO, also an ECMO who do not improve after two days, and also some patients need proning after decannulation. COVID-19 patients show, shows evidence of coagulopathy. Minutes before starting coagulation, uh, cannulation, uh, 10,000 units of heparin IV should be given. Our target PTT should be between 75 to 100. Also, bevlorodine should be considered in cases with thrombosis and unresponsive to heparin. And also here, PTT should be around 75 to, 90, to 95. And we are using here, or that we are, should use here, high dose of bevelorodine about around 03 to 07. Usually, it is 0.1 only. And low aspirin should be added if the, we have still have a continued thrombosis. Those is the experience of the Mayo Clinic from May 2020. And they describe also that is uh, our their patient clientele have still 50 percent, 50 percent of patients and bevlorodine, and in spite of the aggressive anticoagulation, 50 percent of patients have still thrombotic complications. In April this year, the FDA approves the ECMO used to treat COVID-19 patients, and please. Be patient. Long ECMO runs are expected. The main ECMO run days now is 21 days. To summarize, ECMO is an efficient strategy for severe and reversible acute respiratory failure. The ELSO registry is essential for quality, investigative, and clinical decision-making information. Early data from the ELSO registry suggests that ECMO may be an appropriate strategy for several respiratory failure in careful selected patients with COVID-19. Thank you very much.